Hey everybody, I apologize for the noise in the background. That's our generator. Our power went off last night about two o'clock. Lots of surges going on and uh, turns out some teens had a wreck around the corner. Uh, seems like it was chaos in the neighborhood last night. Uh, everyone's okay, but power has been out for almost 12 hours now. Um, but it's a really nice day, kind of outside. Um, little stuffy inside, so it's outside and obviously can't do all the chores um, inside I normally would be doing on this fine Sunday. So I'm outside just enjoying myself. I wanted to show everybody a few things in the yard. Um, I'm going to start with something really cool here. First off, I've got American Lady Caterpillars on some cudweed. There's one here, got another one here. And where is the other one? There's another one out. There's another one in here in a little leaf nest. You can kind of see it in there. So normally we would have pulled these and weeded our beds, but we've been lazy and laziness brings good rewards. It brings caterpillars. Um, you know, this is not the most pretty native plant. Most people see this and say it's a weed but sometimes pretty means you get, uh, uh, not pretty means you get cool things if you just leave things alone a little bit. So I'm very excited about those two. I'm gonna keep an eye on them, see if I can keep track of where they pupate. Look, get the spikes, the spines on their uh, body and the coloration, really a Pretty butterfly. Caterpillar, not butterfly. <laughs> Eventually, butterfly. Ow. All right, so we are in the Texas ragwort patch. Going over here to see what's going on. See if we can get this to focus on this. Bumblebee here. Come here, friend. I don't know what's going on. Oh my god, focus! <laughs> I don't know, I saw it here a while ago. I don't know if it's just resting or what's going on. But the patch is full of pollinators. And this is plants on its way out. It is starting to lean over. We've got some seed heads. Let's see what else we can find. Two butterflies. And a wasp. So this is an area we are trying to kind of rewild. It's been kind of neglected for a while. We're trying to play it out more in the yards instead of having just dedicated beds to everything. And the sad plant in here was an Amorpha levigata and it had wonderful leaves out. I did not cage it and the deer came by. So now it is caged. <laughs> it's a uh, rare native, um, they're called like false indigos. And uh, this is a rare one. And it's kind of hard to see, but we've got all sorts of little plants we've kind of planted through here. Um, different things we're trying to get established. Doesn't look like much right now, but you know, hopefully in a year or two, things will be a lot better. It's a Baptisia. Not sure which one at the moment. I was growing a few and there's not many that are left. Got a uh, red ring milkweed sap or seedling. This is uh, snail seed, Carolina snail seed, just coming up naturally. Fire ants, the devil. <laughs> this is a native grass that comes up in our yard. Um, I'm trying to think of it at the moment. I'm gonna call it like black seed needle grass because it actually, if you look, this is very sharp. <laughs> and uh, my husband hates it because it, it does hurt, um, but it's great for launching itself into deer 
and spreading. <laughs> but it's actually really pretty little native grass. I really like, really like it. So we've got some other milkweeds growing in here, some dicanthelium grasses, another baptisia. Uh, trying to get this verbena. Just trying to see what'll take. That is a verbicina. Can't think of it at the moment. Um, not super common here in Texas, but it is it is around. So yeah, just try to plant this area out, see what takes. You know, it's gonna take a year or two before we really see this looking better. So out here in the edible garden, we have a lot going on. We've got uh, some weeding to do. We've got chives and some fennel and our blackberries have been moved over here. And I weeded this area last night. I need to come water actually, I see. Again, I planted sweet potatoes. I have not grown sweet potatoes in a long time, but I wanted to give them a, another chance since we've redone these beds, raised the elevation up a little bit, see what, uh, what'll grow. And I did not bother weeding down here. These are my husband's plants from a plant sale a couple weekends ago. We need to get plot planted. Um, this is nice little marshallii. Uh, lots of great things. This nice uh, yellow fire wheel. So pretty. So I'm going to go through my edible, my edible bud, my native plant bud in the edible garden and go through a couple of the edible beds as well that I have planted. My husband really hasn't planted much recently, so we'll see. And I planted one of the Texas ragworts in here. And this, I'm very happy to be that is doing good. This is a wand black root. Um, Terracolon is the genus. I can't think of the species right now. I actually grew these from seed um, that I collected here in the neighborhood. It is not a very common species, but it's around this area of Texas. Very excited to do that. And I actually redid this section in here the last couple of days because I made a very dumb mistake. I was thinking it shouldn't be that bad, but I planted some Monarda in there <laughs> and uh, I left some down at this end. So you see the taller plant back in Oop, there. Um, so I left those for now. I'm probably going to pull those. I didn't, I, I, I knew better. I, I've been gardening, you know, 20 plus years. I knew better, but it's like, let's give it a twirl. Let's see if it hop, see if it's okay. It was not okay. <laughs> so I pulled that and kind of opened up some of the space that was in there from some plants that were like, ah, I'm struggling got my Gulf Coast Penstemon, Penstemon tenuous, and it has done really well. Very excited for this plant. And this is an Arnoglossum, and it looks like maybe it's actually going to bloom. And I've got a Rebecca over there. Oh, it looks like I have a Rebecca and a friend. If you look carefully, there's my friend hiding in there. This is a Polygala polygonatum, I think. Little milkwort, little cisterinchium, uh, I think rostulatum hiding in here. I'm not sure what these are. I'm gonna find out. I can't remember. This is a thistle, I do believe. And what remains of my penstemon? Uh, oh my goodness, brain is escaping me at the moment with a name. <laughs> uh, I'm to come back to that one. But this is what remains of this species. It was one of the first penstemons to bloom. Also, interested to see this. This is a, uh, I think, hibiscus lavis. See how this goes. Back here is my uh, standing cypress, Ipomopsis. And there's another one back over there. Looks a little bit like um, dog fennel, but this is not dog fennel. And then, of course, I've got some more columbines over here. They're so pretty. And the Monarda that I'm probably regretting. But, like I said, I pulled up the others. I'm probably going to be pulling up little stems of it for the next several years. I'm going to let this one grow. Let's come get that pepper vine. So I'm going to let this one grow for now and probably pull it after it blooms. Give everything else some space. Over here, I've got a lot of just different pots of things growing or not growing. <laughs> We're gonna see 
what comes up, what doesn't. I actually need to do some more thinning and transplanting of various items and put a few things in the ground. Like I've got all these persimmons I need to do something with. I've got some viburnums, just things I need to plant out, but I need to actually work on my flower beds a little bit more before I do that. So here's some of that space that I cleared out from the Liatris. I've got some, I think these are some onions, alliums, these little um, different rubecchias and acanaceas, a bunch of just little things. I'm not sure what everything was because I didn't, I didn't leave labels in here. I just didn't like that look. And weeds that I see I need to pull. Go weeds out. So there's like good and bad things about having this kind of small space flower. But oh, before I keep going on that, my Zizia arias. <gasps> Very excited about these. I, this is I think the second year I've had them and they have done really well. So I'm excited to see, get some seeds, grow some more out. I love it. So as I was saying, the small space is fun, but you do have to do a lot of maintenance, a lot of thinning. I'll be excited to see how it looks in the next year or two, how things evolve. And this is the bog. I think this needs a dedicated video. And I will try to do that one soon because there's so much to see in there and really cool stuff. For now, here is one of my edible beds. This is a um, Black Eyed Susan vine. I've got a bunch of it coming back from last year. <laughs> it reseeded itself well. I've got some sweet peas that I don't know if they're ever gonna bloom. I had them doing well until we had December freeze. And anyway, I, I need to get some beans actually planted in here. And I recently just took the row cover off of this bed just because I knew the tomatoes really need to get, I need to start thinking about tomatoes more than my kale, which the kale and everything was looking really nice, but um, caterpillars have gotten to it now <laughs> as have the, uh, the mustard, the mustard, it's the best mustard I've ever grown in my life because I covered it. Uh, but now, not looking so great. It actually, it looks like I need to water. Um, but yeah, oh, I do have one tomato back over there. See? Um, so the tomatoes are doing really great. Um, but that's what I'm, my focus is on now. And the kale and mustard are just going to have to, you know, get eaten. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Let's see if I can find who's eating. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, there's there's some friends. Friends eating my kale. But that's just how it goes. And this section right here is my son's. He has a nice tomato. His tomato is probably the biggest in the whole garden. Surprisingly, no fruit yet. Very odd. Uh, maybe. I don't see any yet. And then he loves fennel. Got lots of fennel, got catnip, he wanted rosemary. So that's his bed. And then I've got all the tomatoes. And then I had lettuce in here. I also, this was also covered until recently and just kind of dropped the lettuce there. It's like a little shop and drop, let it compost in place. And my parsley, which I also need to cut. Got a little another cucumber beetle hiding in there. Uh, I need to cut and dry a lot of this. I have also never grown so much good parsley. This was kind of amazing. My calendula also did well. There's a nice little bee in here. Or maybe it's a fly. So the calendula, I've got some uh, coriander, uh, cilantro. And yeah, so that's the bed. And they, <laughs> For you know, clarity's sake, my, my garden is not up kept here. <laughs> it's not a show garden. Um, all this is stuff that we're eventually gonna fix another perimeter bed, just like the bog and where uh, my sweet potatoes are. And we're gonna do another one back over in that section. Just, we have not gotten to that point yet. And so things are still in progress. And I think this is, you know, important to show like, People's gardens aren't always book or magazine worthy. They're 
functional to how to how life is and it's hard when you're working full time you have kids you're tired you might have illnesses or disabilities and you do what you can and show gardens take money and time and effort and not everybody has that all right so that's gonna be it for today I actually have the flower beds up by the generator, but I don't think you want me to go up there and talk because it will be noisy. Plus, uh, there needs to be a lot of work done on some of those. Um, but again, truth in advertising, gardening isn't always a magazine or book cover worthy garden. It's haphazard and crazy and empty spaces and weeds and mulch that needs to be put down. So until next time, that's it for my garden tour.